For this episode, um, I'm highlighting a class that I did this last semester at CCS. And um, I had students that went through the pandemic, essentially. And one of the first things we did in class was evaluate, hey, where are you guys at? What are you doing? Um, majority of the students in this class were seniors. But due to the pandemic and due to the unforeseen um, issues of the pandemic, none of them had had a chance to exhibit their work in a show. And so again, here's the first class, do an evaluation, see where they're at, see what the needs assessment are. And uh, after I found out that they hadn't had a chance to exhibit, not everybody was into it, but at the same time, they were after they had the show. And me personally, uh, thinking here's the premier art college in the city of Detroit, that under insurmountable odds of the pandemic and trying to meet in person or do it on Zoom or whatever accommodations they had to go through for the previous couple of years, I saw this as an opportunity to help make it a well-rounded experience at the university. They've got the best facilities, they get the best places to exhibit, they got all these great um, experiences that are there. And this is just one quick assessment that happened senior year, fall term for these kids that we were able to pull it through, get 100% turnout for this exhibition. And whether everybody absorbed it that night or leading up to it or not, they will in retrospect. I know this firsthand from my own experiences. Being able to say you went through this show, whether it means anything at all right now or if it was just a big pain in the ass while you were in this class, later on, it'll make sense. And one of the best parts about this show was, number one, 100% participation. Number two, um, in, because we went about it in a, a bootstrap sort of way to pull this thing off, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't have everything, uh, the luxury of planning, the luxury of more than a couple months planning to, to make everything happen. But we were able to tap in and say, okay, what do we need to do? We've got the show, we got to get the room, we got to get all these things approved. What do we have to do? So we went through every avenue we had to do to pull this together. That's where the learning takes place. Okay, now we have an, uh, a location. How do we get the frames? How do we get the money for the prints? How do we do this? Then we had to start a student group. That was the second class. The student group provided funding so that the prints could be made for this exhibition. So again, it was all brainstorming while we were in class. Okay, we got this. Now we have this obstacle, which is really an opportunity. How do we overcome that to get to the next step? And I was so excited when we finally had the chance to install, which again, this isn't the luxury of like, hey, we're going to install three weeks ahead of time, get a chance to tweak it. This is install an hour ahead of time before the show, do the very best we can with what we have and try and put on the best presentation that we can. So not only did these kids seek out all the um, resources that they could find uh, a printer on campus to take care of it, find the frames on campus so everything was uniform and a, and a positive presentation, find the easels to present these because we, one of the obstacles was we couldn't attach to the wall. So we had to create a gallery space with what we had. We had to find black linen to make it all uniform to try and dress it up as much as possible. And again, we only had a half hour or half hour to an hour window because of the timing set to set this show up. So again, 100% participation. The kids, it's funny to see who jumped in and really took charge when this, this show was coming together because there's those that participate more than others and it wasn't who I thought it was gonna be. And they stayed to the end. Majority of the kids stayed to the end to make sure it cleaned up. And I had to wheel back uh, 17 of these easels through the tunnels at CCS to return them to the, the room that we borrowed them from. When I got back, these guys stayed to the very end and made it look just like it was when we were setting up. To me, that's success. Watching kids stay to the very end, clean up, do everything it took to not only set up, but also take it and replace it to the way it was supposed to be. Cleanup is usually the hardest thing. That's where you find out, you know, whether somebody's really dedicated. And I had a lot of participation with these kids, a lot of ownership. 
that tells me they're going to be thinking about this in the future. That's what I was excited about with all of this. And one last thing with this is marketing. We didn't have the ability to market through the internal communication channels because we didn't have the luxury of having all the time ahead of time. Or, and part of it is my fault. I didn't know which resources were available and forms that you had to fill out. And, you know, there's all kinds of things that uh, can make the event better. So all the marketing was done through the class. And we talked about what it took to write a press release. We talked about what outlets do we have to promote an exhibit within the city of Detroit. And I'm proud to say we had about 300 people show up for this event. Um, we also uh, had the ability with the, the president of CCS, uh, Don Tusky, show up and really address these kids. And he also brought some new experiences and opportunities as a result of him showing up for the event. He provided new opportunities, support, and also became a mentor for some of the kids that were in the show through the process, because I encouraged that. I encouraged them to go in and meet with them and do the invite. And I was just really excited that he showed, addressed that there was this exhibit, and also that, you know, saying these kids did a good job with it. But the turnout was incredible. People kept coming in well after the event was already closing down. And um, yeah, it was very successful. I was excited about the whole thing. And it's because these guys saw it through. These kids in the class told me they didn't have this experience. We saw it as a need and we went from concept to finished design. They did all the work. And again, I can't overemphasize when I came back after returning all these uh, easels with a couple of the kids, we came back, the place was spotless. That says they care. And that's a success to me. It's really cool uh, to be able to be a part of this project. Uh, John had put everything together um, since the first day of class. It's for our class beyond the portfolio. And John had had this great idea about being able to present our work in a student show. And so we all worked together in different parts of bringing that together. And then in the end, it, it finally brought about to today where we're going to be able to present our work. We're going to be able to gather around in the community. And it's going to be a great opportunity for all of us to get to meet people in the industry, hopefully, and then also be able to hopefully sell a few of our prints. So the piece I chose is, a, is titled Bridge. It was a piece I did on my iPad with the program Procreate. Uh, I chose the piece because uh, I, am, I am a digital artist and I have been really getting more and more comfortable with uh, using digital programs to create my work and that was kind of a standout piece for me. The bridge with a, a nice little scenery, scenic background with mountains behind it. Um, it's more of kind of an almost abstract kind of take on it but I, I just really like the colors that I got to pick into it like nice little uh, soft greens with little yellows pushed in and there's this bluish sky in the background sort of this uh, pink pink sort of purple peppered in to get some nice color. This is going to be my first exhibit in any kind of gallery of any sort and I'm really excited for it. So a lot of students go into CCS wanting to someday show their art in exhibits and it's honestly a great opportunity. Right. So the piece that I'll be showing is going to be a splash art of one of my characters. Her name is Azari. It's the first splash piece that I've ever done in like sort of a League of Legends style. And um, I finished it a little bit late, but I got it in the frame good, like on time for this. And um, it's going to be awesome. I'm really happy that I have it. I'd say that it's my strongest piece that I have so far. Um, it is something I did in my structural figure class, actually. Um, I'm usually the type to work with line rather than um, shape and uh, this project was my first experiment like just working with shape instead of um, line and experimenting more with um, patterns and textures. Um, it was just a model and she's sitting in a chair and it was um, kind of like our interpretation of um, like the style we wanted to follow with so it's just um, a lot of patterns um, in the clothing. Um, it's a little darker than most, but. <laughs> it's really exciting, um, you know, just being in a, an event with a bunch of like different varieties of artists. We have concept artists, more entertainment art style, and then more gallery work such as myself. Um, it's, uh, it's really exciting. I chose my underwater cow painting. It's uh, an oil painting. Um, of a cow kind of like swimming and he was like 
bubbles coming out of his mouth. Uh, I chose this one because uh, it's pretty marketable. People really enjoy this print. It's just very whimsical, very silly. So oil on stretch canvas. I thinned out washes of oil paint with uh, Gamsol and then instead of painting on the paint, I removed paint as part of the process. So it's not painted at all. It's just very like the process is removable. Um, and I think it's very important for the students to have exhibitions. Um, like I said, I thought art was just a joke. I thought it was just sitting at a sitting on a stool, painting uh, out of an easel or just pieces of junk laying around that somebody called art. But it's so much more than that. It's so much more in depth. You got transportation designs, you got color design, character concepts, stop motion. It's just so much. And if everybody could see it, I would highly recommend for everyone to come and see what these guys can do. My goal of highlighting the fact that although we are in very specialized degree paths here at CCS, so much of what we're doing professionally when we enter the field involves us working together and how applicable our skill sets are despite how kind of one track um, the departments can get in order to make sure we understand our specialized skills. Um, and as part of Watson Khan, I have had the pleasure of working to curate one of our student exhibition spaces. Um, it's a single day digital gallery of student, faculty, and alumni work. Um, and we made the decision to pursue that as being part of the program because personally, I think that the opportunity for students and young artists to showcase their work to other academics as well as community members um, is foundational to community culture. Um, so as a student, I consider how I can get my work out there in terms of marketability all the time. Like, that's really what a lot of students, when they go into Watson Com this weekend, will be thinking about. But at the same time, um, I am a big believer that artwork is language without words, and it's one of the best ways of communicating with people, regardless of language barrier. And taking the class out of being able to see art and having access to it through student exhibitions and community ex exhibitions is um, a great way to kind of redefine borders and who has access to the things these artists are saying. Um, so to have student exhibition spaces is to allow young artists and young people to speak to their communities without the barriers of language or socioeconomic class. For my first opportunity, and it was, it was pretty amazing and at the same time terrifying because it was that opportunity to really like step out into the community and it was in a somewhat protected space so the possibility of negative feedback wasn't even a concern right so it was a moment that really um, validated right everything that I had been working for up until that point because you were only given that opportunity if your work was uh, at a certain level or you had good connections <laughs> or maybe both. But I think that that first opportunity, the, the first showing really um, provides a, a big boost to the confidence and um, you feel like because this could be happening before you start to actually enter a market. So you feel like the potential is there because you're actually participating and, and you're engaged in the activity of the professional artist that you aspire to be. So it's a really important um, experience. And I would guarantee that anybody remembers that who, who has that opportunity. So. Um, my first show was as a senior in undergrad at the School of Visual Arts where I uh, studied at the School of Visual Arts in New York. I studied um, illustration um, and I received a bachelor's and a master's degree from there. And although I'm an illustrator, in, in my program we were absolutely encouraged to be engaged with the uh, the, the bigger markets and the bigger ideas of art. So the, the significance in terms of my development was that I um, really 
started to understand how important it was for me to create my own content, right? And, to, and it also made me aware of how important my, um, my ideas were in particularly shaping these ideas that shaped my art, shaped my process, and had everything to do with, I guess, the artist that I have become in over, over this last <laughs> several decades. So uh, it's, it's, it's a significant moment that you never, ever, ever uh, forget and lose sight of. The only bigger moment, I think, is going to um, a museum and seeing the art that you study um, on the walls. And as a student, the impact, particularly as uh, going through a formal um, bachelor's degree program, because you start to make these connections. And at the sa same time, you're standing in front of the artists who are shaping your ideas. So I, I think that um, all of those memories really uh, come together and create a foundation that allows you to grow and to dream and chase for your career. It's so important for our students to exhibit their work and get it out in the community. I think it's beneficial for them, but it's also beneficial for the Detroit community to see their work, to interact with it, and have that dialogue between what they do as artists and what the community is going through, um, whether it be inspiring a young artist, whether it be connecting with industry, or furthering their career in some way. I think the most important thing is the dialogue that it creates between the artist and the community. The first time I, I exhibited my work publicly was, it was such a thrill, it's just something that I don't know if words quite describe the feeling and the excitement that I felt, but it was great because I was able to put everything I could into the work, but also the joy of seeing the audience or, or the, the folks that attended the show and how they responded to it and some of the things that they saw in the work that I might not even have, uh, might not have even intended to include, and that that was what was really thrilling for me, is just having that and the experience of again that dialogue that I had between uh, the audience I was trying to reach and the work uh, I was creating and pouring so much of myself into. Uh, it, for me, it's a it's a thrill to work with up and coming artists and illustrators. For me, I feel like it's part of my. Uh, I guess I would say it's me paying the karma police, you know, it's, it's me really justifying my existence here. So, and I also feel, you know, a distinct uh, satisfaction in helping the next group of artists and illustrators uh, further this great profession and further their careers as artists. And, and it's quite exciting to see where they take what they're, they're doing. I feel spoiled. I get to be around such talent all the time and it inspires me to stay motivated and keep creating. And, and never stop. It gives me that energy that, that is honestly quite hard to uh, sustain over a career, over the 25 years I've been a working artist and illustrator. So the piece I'm choosing to put up is a paper cut illustration um, uh, based on a model I really like named Wisdom K. Um, and I chose this one because I just really like how it turned out and um, I really like the silhouette in it and I think it makes a bold statement, not only in like art but fashion as well. My piece is a paper cut illustration. It's um, 11 by 17. It is um, made with colored pencil, stock, stock board. Um. One, it helps uh, build them confidence and talk to their community and just share their work um, to the public. It's great. Uh, first time I seriously exhibited work um, was my senior studio, which was uh, is the same course I teach. Um, I was fortunate enough to basically sell my first like half of my like first body of work and uh, 
basically it set me up for the full year where um, I had a lot of confidence in the work I was making. Especially in the academic setting, when students leave here, this is such a network and it's like you're here and you have the network by default because you're physically here, but then when they're gone, it's like, what do I have to look forward to? So when you have spaces to go to and meet people and meet people that aren't necessarily in the academic setting, um, and when they're open to the public, it creates a greater conversation for the community. And there's like a lot more um, integration of thoughts and like culture or just even like aesthetics people are pursuing, you know, like movements happen just from influence from each other. So when you're siloed and insular, like it doesn't really build much. So when you have a space that people can go and converse and feel welcome, like that's huge. So it helps build community and um, a creative setting that everybody can be a part of. It's incredible. So. So it's really important that would, would, whenever there's space around the campus for people to show new work, it's not only about their new work, it's about the younger students seeing um, upper term or upper semester classwork as well. So it's not only about important to show your work kind of as a, fin a finality to say I'm done and I've gotten thus far or a new water work mark for myself, it's important for the individual. But for the camaraderie of the school, it's really important to say, yeah, did you see that seventh or eighth term work for that class, for instance, and say, yeah, that's what I'm shooting for a year from now. If I'm that person can do that, so can I when I get there. So I think it, it has that duality to it. So yeah, so it's important in both things. Um, it gives you a chance to meet other people, but ultimately, when you get into the upper terms, if you're trying, you know, if you're, um, you know, trying to do internships and also promote around town to start showing your portfolio around. That's another finality with all the shows, but the, the most important things between your peers here at the show, I mean at the school, is to be able to uh, show your work at different places and have um, the most current work from a particular class up, let's say, two or three times in a semester. And on top of that, if we got to show our class work on different wall displays and we're asked to, you were proud of that because you knew that you were, you know, you were doing uh, quality work. And then, of course, yeah, being in some minor shows. And then as an illustrator, of course, uh, if you get into a student exhibition at Society Illustrators, I was lucky enough to do that. And that, was, that meant a lot, too, because then you got to meet a whole bunch of other real illustrators. So, um, yeah, so it's just a pathway to really make connections. Um, it's still a people-person world. I know a lot of people say, well, I've never met the art directors I work for, but actually I think most regional people um, actually meet a lot of people. And so that's the beginning of it is exhibiting your work and actually talking to people about it uh, that show up at the, you know, at the show other than just your friends. You have to make that your um, final deadline. The, uh, as a student, you have your deadlines for actual um, project deadlines, but really the real deadline would be is, is the um, um, step after that to actually show it, frame it, or have it in a presentable manner where you can go talk about it or hopefully there is a gathering for it and it's up for a while. So yeah, that I would say showing work would ultimately be the real deadline after you know the project is due. So that would be, ideally, that would be great. So uh, to be involved with this is a sense of community. So we have our classmates all coming together, working on this together, putting it all together, working on it as a team. So it's about community for me. So my piece is called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and it is about, uh, it was inspired by the Green Knight movie that came out recently and um, basically what I do with my pieces is I try to put women in roles of great renown. Um, so in old stories like that in folklore oftentimes it's viewed from the male gaze and I try to change that. So in my piece the Green Knight is a female character and Sir Gawain is on the ground and she's mid-swing so you're not sure if he's actually going to get get his head cut off or not. Is the original is 40 by 60 inches on masonite and it is painted in acrylic. Um, and it's kind of inspired by uh, pre-Raphaelite pieces. So like John William Waterhouse, uh, John Everett Millay, and people like artists like that from like the late 1890s, my inspiration. Um, and also um, from like, I get inspired by uh, mythology and folklore as well, so that's what the piece is based off of. We're out in front of the Detroit Institute of Arts talking to Kelly Johnson about the importance of student art exhibits. Kelly, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much, I'm glad to be here. Kelly, do you remember the first student exhibit you had as an artist? Absolutely. I was juried into an exhibition at the Edsel and Eleanor Ford House, and it was just it was a really cool experience and I will always remember it. 
Well, that came back pretty quick. So the quick recall on something like this has a lasting impact Abs on everyone's life, right? Absolutely. And for me, and I imagine other first time artists as well, you know, it's a really big boost of confidence because you're putting yourself up there and people are excited and willing to and wanting to see your artwork. Now, we talked earlier, you had some uh, reference points for young artists that you had an impact on their lives uh, in the past. Yes, yeah, so I was attending a wedding at, of a friend of mine and they, it was at a local art community center full of young artists, probably from like fifth grade to 10th grade. And it was probably their first time on, on display. And as a wedding gift to the couple, I purchased one of the paintings and gave it to them as a present. And my husband and I were so enamored with this one piece of artwork, a Lego dinosaur, that we ended up purchase, purchasing it for ourselves. And it hangs on display in our kitchen to this day. I'd, hey. like, I'd like to think that I really made that young kid's day. You know, he gets to brag to all of his friends that he made 50 bucks from selling his first piece of artwork. It could change his whole life with the with the confidence that happens with that transaction. 100 yep. percent. It just gives you that much more motivation to keep putting yourself out there. Eric, I'm glad you're here. I feel pretty good about this. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Eric, do you remember your first art exhibit as a kid? You know what? I did not have that experience as a child. I, I had some abilities, but I didn't have anyone to coach me and to introduce me to the world of art. So those things like laid fallow for a really long time. I didn't rediscover them until my adulthood. So this is like an open wound I just brought, brought up, huh? <laughs> yep. You know what, Eric? I'm here for you. You got any salt? <laughs> Do you know the, uh, oh, you know what I can do? Pink Himalayan salt, by the way. <laughs> yeah, only the best for you. Um, yeah, so. What about your first band? I count I, that as the same opportunity. We can't say that on things that are Well, not to the be... title, but the experience you had. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do the acronym it, it for it. A, it was a really naughty band name. You, you can't know oh, this. <laughs> well, this is good for ratings week. So just give the acronym for the band. VDC. Okay, good enough. Yeah. That leaves people with the idea. Yeah, it had be, nothing to do what with What is he talking about? Disease. Victoria's Secret? Um, go, but that first experience with your band, that was high school? Uh, that was high school. And we, we were delusional enough to think that we could take over the world. And that's still part of the plan. Oh, I know. I know you're still living it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's the best Even part. as old men, we're, <laughs> we're still planning to take over the world. That first experience with the band, the first time you guys performed together, do you remember it? There were a couple of sort of performances. Um, the that, one that the principal didn't shut down? <laughs> yeah. Mostly we were about the, the promotion of the band rather than the band's music. We, we did have music, but we were so much better at, at putting ourselves out there and annoying people. Okay, and on that note, because I own one of these pieces, um, can you talk about where you would buy the t-shirts that you would reprint over with the band name? <laughs> well, <laughs> we should probably move on. It's a trade secret, I'm afraid I can't oh, reveal oh, that. Oh, okay, okay, we don't, yeah, we wouldn't want to wreck anything. No. Yeah. No. So anyways, Eric used to buy t-shirts and print over them with the band's name. And those t-shirts already had some kind of logo on it. Oh, I'm sorry. He's talking about it, it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I own one of them. It's my favorite t-shirt. The impact that that first performance had, and you're still talking about doing it. Yeah, there, there's something, like whether it's music or visual art or any kind of art, uh, there's something about like getting out there and realizing suddenly that people want what you have, what you represent, what um, what kind of power there is in that. And I, I can imagine that for some people there's, you know, a temptation to abuse that, but really I just wanted everybody to have as much fun as I was having on stage. So if I was going nuts, I wanted everybody else to go nuts. And I might, I might have to put a plug in for the later band. Was it Angry Red Planet? 
That was one of them. Do mm -hmm. you want to go yes. through the top three bands you were in? Um, they were all in alphabetical order. There was Angry Red Planet, there was the Beatless and the Bushmasters simultaneously, Cinecide and the Dirt Bombs. And um, uh, there is a book on Detroit by Steve Miller, right? Yes. That you and your alias are throughout that book. He gives you credit throughout the whole thing. I'm putting a shameless plug in for Steve's book. And for you, who is yes. highly featured in, it's called Detroit, right? Uh, Detroit Rock City. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for coming <laughs> on the show. You're welcome.